Salut, welcome. I've recently had like a lot of new people come to my channel, like 10,000 people, which is absolutely insane. And I'd say that like my most frequently asked question is why I'm in France, what am I doing here? How did I end up studying in Paris? And so I thought I would start from the beginning and just, just explain the whole situation because it wasn't something that was planned out. It's been very based on last minute decisions and it's turned out good, but there were moments where I really didn't know if it would work out. So yeah, I'm just gonna talk about me and my journey and what I'm doing here, why I'm here, etc, etc, etc. Aussi, je voulais juste dire que la plupart de mes abonnés maintenant sont français et ça fait trop plaisir parce que j'ai pas fait autant d'amis français que je voulais et maintenant je sens comme si j'avais beaucoup, enfin, des centaines d'amis français et ça fait trop plaisir. Alors, euh, salut à vous. Ok. From the start, so my mom is French and my dad is English and so I'm half half but I grew up most of my life in England. I grew up hearing French and I grew up bilingual but in a weird kind of way I could understand literally everything like I've always understood the language but when my mom would speak to me in French I would reply in English which meant that although I could understand my spoken level of French was just quite limited. It's really hard to explain. I just found it really hard to express myself in French. Um, the accent obviously wasn't there. My grammar was a bit all over the place and I found it really hard to find my words in my head, chercher les mots. But that's why my French is at a level, that level so quickly, is because I obviously have such a massive background with French and all I needed was to be sort of immersed in the culture to sort of bring it up to like the top of my head. Bilingualism is so much more complicated than just being able to be fluent in more two languages. Like fluency is such, there's a spectrum. So at 18, I decided to study French and Spanish at university. Why French and Spanish? Because I had no idea what I wanted to do. It was the stress of my life trying to figure out um, something that I enjoyed and I was gonna study for three years. So I knew that I enjoyed the humanities in general, history, literature, art history. And I knew that I also liked language, um, languages and traveling. And so I thought studying a language, you sort of get all of that in a package. You just study it in the language. Yeah, I opted for French and Spanish with Italian, potentially at the University of Durham. And I found the offer. So I was going to go to Durham and then COVID struck. And I spent the whole, I just feel like it was a really weird time for people in second year of A-levels because firstly our A-levels were cancelled. So that was a bit of a emotional roller coaster. It was just really strange because they were cancelled too late for it to be, um, like I'd done all the revision. I was ready to sit the exam and they got cancelled. And then we just spent months in lockdown. And over that time I was thinking, am I actually going to be happy in Durham? I just think one of the main reasons why I wanted to go to university was for the social aspect and obviously making connections, going to societies and really sort of getting involved. And I knew that with COVID, all that would sort of be cancelled. And I just, oh, it was just such a front, like, just such a scary time. I was just having all these doubts. And during that summer, me and my family, uh, for our holiday, we went down the west coast of France. During that summer, I fell in love with the west coast of France and I'm still so in love with it. Like France is so beautiful and the west coast is insane. I can't, like I really, really want to go back. It was in Bordeaux where I was walking and I was thinking, I'm half French, I could study in France. I could try uni in France. And I hadn't really thought about this up until that moment. Um, but I just didn't want to leave. I was there and I didn't want to leave and I thought, I'm gonna try. And so, from that moment, bearing in mind this was like August, I started researching because I had no idea how this French system worked. I started researching courses and I spent hours and hours and hours trying to find out and I ended up applying through Bacoursoup, which is the French platform. And because it was so late in the year, like normally the deadline is March, because it was so late in the year, I had was technically going through a sort of clearing where they would just show the degrees that had space. Luckily, there was a place in the double licence espagnole histoire. And so I was like, okay, okay, 
that's it. I'll, I'll try that one. I'll apply for that one. And I applied. I had to do a letter de motivation in French and in Spanish. I had to send in all my grades. My grades are English and normally, normally you're meant to get a few for foreign degrees foreign grades you're meant to get them translated by a translator and I didn't have time or money to do that so I literally just did it myself I don't know how I got accepted but I did it myself same thing with you're meant to have a b2 certificate official saying that you can speak French like b2 level to do the degree I didn't have that and you're meant to sit that months in advance so I just said on I, I literally just wrote a letter being like a level french is equivalent to the b2 qualification or something like that and somehow that got accepted as well um plus i think perhaps what helped was the fact that i was applying through my french nationality i somehow got in and i found out i got in like late august and i just remember oh i don't know because the sorbonne my mum's always talked about the sorbonne as like this really prestigious university and ah i can't i remember the moment when i found out i got in um like i was crying like my mum was crying she was on the phone to her mum it was just really incredible and then i had the decision of because I'd been accepted into both unis, I had the decision between going to Durham or deferring Durham for a year and trying out the Sorbonne. And this was, I spent hours and hours thinking this out and I ended up choosing the Sorbonne. I got my accommodation sorted literally two days before I left. I applied to City Universitaire, which is a student residence for international students and also French students, I think. But um, it's based in the south of Paris and it's, it's really, it's a really cool place. I'll do another video on accommodation another time, but um, it's like 50, like loads of, you've got different residences, which are called houses and each house represents a country. And um, I was in the Franco-Britannic house. Honestly, thank God I had my first semester in a student residence because winter lockdown hit and university classes went online and it was just, it, we had curfew, so you weren't allowed outside after 6 p.m. And I was like, it was just a really difficult semester in terms of making friends, because I obviously didn't really meet anyone at the Sorbonne, seeing as the exam went online. And thank God we had City Universitaire because I was able to make friends with people in my residence. Uh, I also started a week late because this was all happening August, September, all this application stuff. I arrived at the Sorbonne a week late, which was really strange stressful looking back it just seems so crazy that this has all worked out also at city university the reason why i don't still don't live there is because it's actually reserved for master's students and after the first semester they were like we don't like you're not a master's student you have to leave um so i had to leave and find my own accommodation but um yeah i just remember arriving like 18 year old me surrounded by students in masters and phd and i was just like hi i'm a fresher um but they were still really lovely and i think it was such a learning experience I, it was quite a learning experience to be surrounded by people who are older than you leaving home and i think it filled me with a lot of reassurance because they didn't know what the hell they were doing and they were like 23 24 25 and so i was like okay if i don't really know what i'm doing and i'm 18 i've got plenty of time um, and you learn a lot from being around people who are older than you. Anyway, that semester was really difficult and quite challenging in terms of just the whole COVID situation and the lockdown situation. I remember there were times where I did feel really lonely. I really did consider abandoning the whole idea of the Sorbonne and going back to England and just starting afresh at Durham. The next year and i remember I, I, on a phone call to my brother he was like anyway sometimes you have to just stick things out and i did i ended up sticking it out i got through first semester and second semester was so much better because things were starting to open up and then when the summer came and paris in summer is just bliss like it's just it's just so good and restaurants are open museums are open galleries are open i could get out and do things and my degree i was starting to get into the rhythm of things and yeah i i finally decided that I would stay another year. Second semester, I moved to the seventh arrondissement and I really, really liked the seventh arrondissement, but it was a bit far from uni. 
And then now this year, I live in the fifth arrondissement. Arrondissement. Le cinquième, um, which I actually think is probably my favorite. I just really, really like the fifth. I also really like Le Marais. I think if I didn't live in the fifth, I would live in Le Marais. That's like my story of how I got here. Yeah, oh, just to add, I also, the reason, another reason why I really wanted to do a language degree was for the year abroad. And I don't know, coming to France, I was like, I could end up doing a year abroad for three years. Like I, I did envision going to Paris, studying a French degree, but little did I know I'd end up being here just for three years straight, which was so, so lovely. And then there was also the side that I'm half French and I've always felt a bit French and I really wanted to discover that side of me. And I do feel like my personality changes a bit when I speak French, like I become more French. I don't know, it's just so lovely and I'm just so happy that I've been able to do that. and discover my French side and now I'm here I really don't see myself going back to England. Fast forward I'm now in second year of university I've just finished my second year I had my exams and yeah it's really worked out and I'm really really happy here. I think I will if it's helpful do another video that goes into depth on my degree and what it's about and what the exams are like etc because when I was researching there was absolutely nothing out there. Long story short I have two translation classes, French to Spanish, Spanish to French, grammar classes. I have linguistics classes. I have two civilization modules. Normally it's like one on Spain, his Spanish history, one on Latin American history, and then two literature modules. So There'll be poetry or Latin American literature, et cetera, et cetera. And then I have a history of art class and then two optional modules and I choose those in art history because I love art history. And what else is that? I think that's it. Oh, and then you also have to do either Portuguese or Catalan. And I think that's, oh, and then you have another, <laughs> you have another optional module, um, but that's my degree kind of summed up. So you get history, literature, language, translation, and art history. But yeah, that is a bit about me and my journey, but I'm really, blessed and happy to be here. I'm really blessed and happy to be here. If you're thinking about making the jump and going abroad, I really do recommend just doing it and trying it out. And if it doesn't work out, you can always fall back on, um, like I could have always fallen back on England and you can always fall back on something on your home country. But if you're thinking about it, please just do it. Like just do it, just do it, just do it, just do it. You, I really don't think you'll regret it because you'll learn so much from the process. And I genuinely wish you all the best and stick through it sometimes because it's not all perfect. But yeah, I hope that was helpful. And again, a big thank you to 10,000 of you. Like that's so, ah, I don't know. It's just so crazy. And your comments are just so lovely too. Like they make me so happy. So um, yeah, big kisses, lots of love, bisous.